Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. I am your wrestling purist, Jeff Hitman Hall, and you guys know the deal. And gals, we're going to talk NXT. This is the uh, this is your first N NXT after uh, Takeover Thirty Six. So to start the show, you got Cameron Grimes, and he's coming out with the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and uh, he's getting fireworks, he's getting pyro, he's getting celebration, and uh, he's kind of just uh, putting himself over. DiBiase is doing the same thing, and you know these two guys are have been working really, really, really well together. Um, you know they're going to the moon, and, and kind of that's it. So that 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 opened up your show, uh, opened up your show. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Uh, Cameron Grimes is kind of coming into his own. It's kind of a little over the top for me, but um, it was it wasn't bad at all. Next on the on the card, you got Ridge Holland versus Timothy Thatcher. This has been coming for a while. You know, he's been telling telling old Timothy Thatcher that he's going to get him. He's going to get him, and lo and behold, he got him. Um, Ridge goes over. And then you kind of have a big schmoz, big brawl at the end. Peter Dunes out there. Um, Danny Birch is back. Um, Oni Lorcan's out there jumping on him. So you got one big uh, fight, and then they kind of end up, up breaking, breaking everything up. And that's that's kind of how that that went. Then we cut to a little promo package with Carmelo Hayes. Um, on this episode of NXT, you're going to have your breakout tournament final. And he's just kind of talking, you know, how he got there, what he plans on doing, and, and you know, he's ready to take care of business. Then we get another little promo deal with Dexter Loomis and Andy Hartwell, and they're in love. <laughs> Dexter's just straight, Loomis is just straight face like he always is. Um, and, and, you know, being in love and being engaged is great. And everybody's asking kind of for a date, and they come out and say September 14th is going to be a wedding. and come on, come on, and they're going to tie the knot. And guys and gals, if you've watched any modicum of professional wrestling, um, one, personally, I love a good wrestling wedding because they always end up the same. Um, are they overdone? Absolutely. But I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll, I'll find something that I enjoy. Something I dislike, but something I enjoy uh, also. And Beth Phoenix was putting the wedding over pretty good. I mean, she also kind of had a hand in it, so that's, that's probably a given. Tag team, um, tag team matches up next. Casey Cat Nazaro and Caden Carter facing JC Jane and GG Dolan. Um, this one was really, really interesting because I kind of went into it thinking that Dolan and JC were gonna get a win here because they've you know been push not pushing them, but on vignettes they've been doing their thing and you know they kind of have one like every other week at this point but Kat Nazaro and 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 Carter have been on a roll so they 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 have a little double team like kind of like swing and neck breaker into like 450 splash and they go over so Kat Nazaro and Carter go over uh Jane and Dolan uh, again it didn't surprise me but it kind of surprised me a little bit then from there we cut to a, another kind of backstage promo. Um, Raquel Gonzalez is getting interviewed and she's just kind of talking about how, you know, she went over Dakota Kai and her knowing Dakota, you know, she's probably gonna, well, it's never really over and she'll come back and then in steps Frankie Monet. And, you know, she's kind of trying to in, in, insert herself here um, and Jesse Kamea and Robert Stone. Robert Stone, I can't stand. I, he is the worst. I don't get his character. I don't get any of the bits that they're doing. Um, you know, it just it drives me insane. But in that segment, pretty much she's Frankie Monet is just saying she's, you know, she's coming after a title and she doesn't have to worry about Kaylee Ray because she needs to worry about Frankie Monet. And then, um, you know, the other side of the coin, you get another little promo package again, leading to the breakout tournament. And this time it's Odyssey Jones because he will be fighting Carmelo Hayes during the show. Same deal. Just telling you the, you know, the rise and everything he's done to get up there and how it's going to end, uh, you know, his life. Then we get Jay, uh, Kaylee Ray in action against Valentina Royce. 
And this poor girl, I guess, is a jobber. And Kaylee Ray, Kaylee Ray just murdered this girl. Um, and that was it, you know, showing why, you know, why she was the women's UK um, NXT longest reigning champion because she she sure did take care of this girl like it was no bit nobody's business. Next, they kind of cut backstage to a promo, and you got J.C. Jane and, G and Gigi Dolan, and they're kind of walking backstage from getting their butts kicked. And Mandy Rose walks up and says, um, if you don't want to feel like this again, come with me. And they kind of look at each other and go, eh, you know, what else do we have to lose? So um, that's that. So, you know, so I guess they're going to have like some type of stable or, or something like that, you know. But I guess uh, we will see. So now... Um, a little segment joe kind of comes out there and he's your nxt championship coming off of beating carrying cross he's the first and only triple champion um nxt world heavyweight champion and he's just kind of saying hey he's a new sheriff in town he opens up an open challenge peter dune comes out peter dune comes out and says let's do this talk to regal and get this done and then next thing you know make the match and then next thing you know, L.A. Knight comes out and he says the same thing. He wants a little piece of the title. And after that, you know, it, it, uh, Kyle O'Reilly comes limping out there. And Kyle O'Reilly was, he was funny because he was calling L.A. Knight La Knight. And that was getting me. So pretty much both guys kind of, I mean, all the guys want a piece of the, of, of the, of the, of the title. And then out of nowhere, here comes Ridge Holland. He starts beating up Kyle O'Reilly. Ciampa hits the ring. And then you got a kind of big smiles of, of you know, right, kind of beating everybody up. Um, at the end of the day, Joe's kind of standing tall, you know, looking like Samoa Joe, like he is. And that was kind of the end of that. Then we have another little backstage promo or it looks like Ted DiBiase, you know, he's getting in his limo and he's leaving and he's telling Grimes like, Hey, you know, I'm so proud of you. You did this, you did that, you know, I believed in you and everything's good. And, and Cameron Grimes is saying, you know, I couldn't have done it without you. So that was pretty cool. And he, as he's getting in the limo, he says, you know what? He says, you can keep the, the million dollar title and Cameron Grimes, Cameron Grimes says, oh, you know, no, man, I, I can't do that. It's yours. And he says, nah, it's on me, man. Keep it. And Cameron Grimes looks down at the tongue and says, man, this feels kind of funny. And he looks at the back of it and it says, it's a replica. And then old Ted DiBiase laughs and he, he, he pulls up out of there. Next is your final NXT breakout tournament. Odyssey Jones versus, versus Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes goes over here. And I was, I wasn't super shocked, but I was shocked. I kind of wanted Odyssey Jones to go over. I guess you probably couldn't go wrong with, with either, either, you know, either guy going over here, but yeah, um, he goes over, he goes up, cuts a promo and says, Carmelo Hayes says he never misses. Next, you got Boa accompanied by Mei Ying and he's facing Zion Quinn. Um, I've never seen this guy. No one's ever seen this guy. They're wrestling, they're wrestling, they're wrestling. Mei Ying pops up and gives him some type of, you know, hey, do this. And he turns and says yes. And when he turns around, he eats a kick from Zion Quinn. And one, two, three, it's over. And he's kind of stunned. He's, he's left there uh, shocked. It's backstage time again with Johnny Gargano. He's talking to Regal. He wants this wedding, Indy Hartwell's wedding off. LA Knight comes in and says he wants a piece of Joe. And now they're arguing. And then, and then next week, we're going to get Johnny Gargano and uh, L.A. Knight in, in some action. Next scene, they, they kind of cut to a dojo or a gym, and it's Malcolm Bivens with Diamond Mine, and Roddy Strong's in there, and he's training other guys. You know, they're working in the background, and, and Bivens says, you know, he's, he's, he's leaving an open challenge um, next week for the Diamond Mine for Roddy Strong. And that was that. Uh, oh, also still calling out Kushida as well. And then now it is time to get to your, well, I wouldn't say your, your finale, your main event here. And it's Hit Row versus Legata Del 
Phantasma. This was a really, really, really good match. There was a couple of things in it I didn't like. Um, just, you know, me being the wrestling purist that I am, uh, Swerve Scott goes like kind of a hot tag and then is almost there, then rolls back into Escobar so he can dive over. I, I didn't like that, but a very, very, very entertaining match. Um, really, really good six-man tag. Interesting ending, though, here. So you have um, Santos Escobar goes over the top, and he's outside, and BFAB kind of comes over there and presses, uh, pushes him into the post, and he hits his head and falls down. And next thing you know, you see some, some girl out there that you have no idea who she is, never seen this girl before, and she's looking at BFAB. And she she undoes her uncrosses her arms and hits her hits BFAB in the stomach with a with a lead pipe or a pole. She goes down. She uh, that unbeknownst to us, this girl is Electra Lopez, and she tosses the lead pipe into the ring. First, Scott catches it and turns and goes to get rid of it. When he goes to get rid of it, he gets clocked one two three and it's over. And then you see uh, Electra Lopez saying, uh, you know, La Familia to Santos Escobar. Um, I thought this was a good inning. Like I said, again, really good match. I think Santos out of Joaquin Wild and Mendoza, um, Escobar is a star. I think he's the guy that kind of at some point needs to break away. I, I think you can do a lot with him. But this was this wasn't a bad uh, NXT, you know, post takeover 36. Um, and I, that that kind of sums it up. That's that was our episode. Um, yeah, like I said, good show, not the best show, but by no means not a, not a bad show. I, I've recently kind of noticed here that the shows after the pay-per-views are kind of usually better than the actual go-home shows. I don't know what sense that makes. That's kind of, in my opinion, what's what's been going on. But like I said, that's it. That's going to conclude this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing to Podcast Order. Check everything that we do out. These guys work so hard. Um, and again, watch new wrestling. Watch old wrestling. Watch some wrestling you've never seen before. If it's new to you. Um, I'm Jeff Hitman Hall. Keep wrestling pure. And then remember, if you're not going to put yourself over, nobody else will. <laughs>